Good morning, Christian Mission! Yeah. Good to see you all here. Good to be here. You know, I'm going to start off a little different. We sang a song this morning. There's joy in the house of the Lord. There's joy in the house of the Lord today. Our God is truly in this place. I was singing that thinking, I wonder how many people are really believing that God is truly in this place. And if they're believing that, where's the joy? And I'm not saying we didn't even have joy. I'm just saying, I think if we truly believe that God is in this place, I think uh, maybe perhaps our worship might even look a little different than it does sometimes. I think it's so easy to just start singing sometimes instead of realizing that our God is here. Amen. He is with us. He is amongst us. Before church this morning, I was talking with Mikey and uh, Mikey said, oh, I like this. Some musician. I don't even know who the person is. And someone said, well, that person played the piano for me and accompanied me. And I was so happy that they did. If a celebrity walked through those doors, people would be looking at all this and everything would be going on and heads would be bobbing and weaving and trying to see. And afterwards, people would want to go up and, and uh, God's here. He's with us. Live your life in such a way He's inside of you. If you know him and you've invited him in, he's in there. Live like it. Live your whole life like it. So, our thing, be still and know that I am God. That's good for us all the time. Be still and know that I am God. And John Gill says in the commentary, he says, part of that makes all things work together for good to them. That's why we're in Romans 8.28. And we know that God causes all things to work together for good for those who love the Lord and are called according to his purpose. And that Greek word we've been looking at is agathos. And part of the definition of agathos is benefit. And the definition of benefit, part of it is an advantage or profit gained from something. And when I read this, the first thing I thought of, that's kind of the world. We're always trying to gain something. We're always trying to gain, we're always trying to get ahead, we're always trying to go, and we put it so much on us that we're always trying to get there. And don't get me wrong, God says, if a man shall not work, neither shall he eat. So, I mean, we need to be working and God works with us. And in ministry, we need to be ministering and God needs to be with us. But we have the mentality and so much, if I do a little more, then God will love me more. If I do this, then God will accept me. If I do this, then we can't do that. He's not going to love you any more than he loves you today. As a matter of fact, I'm going to teach you some, a new song. The lyrics go like this. Jesus loves me. This I know. For the Bible tells me so. Little ones to him, they, to him belong. They are weak, but he is strong. Or as Gunner sings the song, <coughs> Jesus loves me this way. Oh! And his head goes down and never makes it through it. And I don't even know if he says Jesus. I can just hear the la la. <laughs> Jesus loves you. You've heard it. But sometimes we forget it. He's with us. He's here right now. He is not going to love you any more than he loves you right now. You cannot gain his love. He's already given it. You can just receive it. And then part of the definition of payment or gift made by an employer, the state, or an insurance company. This is all things work together for good. All things work together for benefit. A payment or gift made. That's, that's who God is. He's the one who gives us the gift of his son, Jesus Christ. You can't earn it. You can't work hard enough. There's nothing you can do to get it. He's not going to love you any more than he loves you right now. However, if you haven't invited him in, then you don't have a relationship with him. So you're not experiencing his love and walking in his love. That's only going to come in relationship. And when you invite him in and he comes in, then you have that. That's God's grace. 
That's God's mercy. God's mercy is he doesn't give us what we deserve. And he gives us his, or maybe I have them backwards. I always get those two mixed up. And one is you can't get, earn it. The other one he's going to give you what you don't deserve. And his mercy is he doesn't give us what we do deserve. And grace is getting what we don't deserve. He gives us to us. That is awesome. Stay there. That's his benefit. He paid the price. He did it. And receive it. Accept it. Live in God's grace. Walk in God's grace. Walk in his mercy. Don't walk out from it. Because sometimes we walk away and we leave it. And then uh, also along with this, part of the definition is to receive an advantage or a profit. We receive it. He provides it. We receive it. Receive what he has for you. Receive all he has for you. So it says in Romans 6, 20 through 23, for when you were slaves of sin, you were free in regard to righteousness. Therefore, what benefit were you then deriving from the things of God, which you are now ashamed for the outcomes of these of those things is death. But now having been freed from sin and enslaved to God, you derive your benefit resulting in sanctification and the outcome eternal life. For the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. But now having been freed from sin and enslaved to God, you derive your benefit, what you receive, resulting in sanctification holiness and the outcome eternal life and remember there's three parts to sanctification there's positional sanctification and that is if you have Jesus in your life you are covered by his blood he doesn't see your sins are all washed away that's positional sanctification and then there's progressional sanctification that is living this life on a daily basis and hopefully we're growing in holiness remember sanctification means set apart from sin and set apart to holiness so we're set apart from sin when we accept jesus and positionally all our sins are washed away and then we live this life on a daily basis and we deal with temptations and we deal with the things we face hopefully we're growing in our relationship with the lord hopefully we're progressing in our holiness in him. Not that we can always get better and good enough. I'm not saying that. But we love him so much. We want to please him more and more and more and more. If we could get where we're perfect. We wouldn't have to have the cross. We wouldn't have to be here. But we can't do it. As a matter of fact. That's why the law was given. To show that we can't keep it. And when you realize you can't keep it. Hopefully you find out the one who did keep it. And his name's Jesus. And the price that he paid. So we have a benefit, and when we, we receive the benefit, that he says in Ephesians 2, 8, and 9, it says, For by grace you have been saved through faith, and that is not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not as a result of works, so that no one may boast. It's only God's grace. Purely his grace and nothing but his grace that we're able to have salvation and that we're saved. And then it says in Psalm 103, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget none of his benefits. First of all, start off every day blessing the Lord. And then throughout the day, be blessing the Lord. And then at the end of the day, be... You guys got the idea. Blessing the Lord. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Who's singing the song with me in their head? Yeah. You have some of you singing that with me, aren't you? Yeah, you can't help it. I would sing it, but it would sound like a dying cow, so it doesn't go that great. <laughs> Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and forget none of his benefits, who pardons all your iniquities, all our sin, pardoned, pardoned, pardoned. Part it. Part. That's easy to talk about. That's not easy to believe sometimes. 
Sometimes we just feel like we're definitely not worthy. And I sin over and over and over. And how can he pardon me over and over and over? And we struggle with it. A lot of people struggle a lot with it. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and righteous to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. You know how many times he does that? As many times as you need. But you don't say, okay, well then I'm just going to go do what I want to do whenever I want to do it. Just, no, we don't want to abuse God's grace. We all want to understand that we love him more. And because the more we love him, the more we want to please him. The more we want to be obedient. The more we want to do what's right. So many think it's just like a parent and child. And uh, all we want to do is not get caught. You know what? So I can do whatever I want as long as my mom didn't catch me or something like that. Then I'm good to go. The first lie I can ever remember telling. I was in first grade. And I don't know why I did this. But my mom used to teach Sunday school. By the way, happy birthday yesterday, mom. She's uh, 91 years young. So, happy birthday, mom. My mom used to teach Sunday school. And uh, she had this box of these gold stars. Now, I found this box of gold stars. And I went to my sister's room and I made a happy face on their wall of the gold stars. Do you remember this, mom? No? You did so many things. <laughs> <laughs> And still I know that I am God. <laughs> Everything that's going through my head, I'm just going to leave it in there this morning. Just... So I made this happy face. I don't know the big deal. Mom said, who did that? And for some reason, her tone of voice, her, um, tone of voice or something like that, I just thought someone was in trouble. So I said, I didn't do that. I didn't do that. I lied. Finally, I don't know how, I think I confessed. Finally it happened because, and then I started lying all the time about everything. Big things, little things, I was lying all the time. And then I would tell the truth and they would think I was lying. And I'd be really telling the truth and they wouldn't believe me. I had a, hung, a sign hung around my neck for two weeks that said, I am a liar. And I had to walk around with it. Nowadays, I'd be child abuse. It probably still is. As a matter of fact, somebody dialed child abuse hotline right now. I had to walk around. I had to go to spend two weeks in my bedroom. And I could only leave to get a meal and to go to the bathroom. That was it. Besides that, you're staying in your bedroom. They tried all sorts of things. And then finally, my dad just said, Dave, come here. And I walked up to him and he backhanded me and sent me flying. And I was crying. And more child abuse. And then, uh, what's that? Yeah, well, I had it coming for sure. More than I. Yeah. So then he says, Dave, come here. You know, he just sent me flying. I go, no. He goes, come here. I said, no. He goes, come here. I promise I won't hit you again. Come here. No. Finally go over there. Wham! Slams me again, right? And then he just says, every time you tell us something, we don't know if you're telling the truth or not. Just like now, when I, if I tell you to come back, you won't know if I'm going to hit you or not. And that's what it's like. And I remember that. I can't remember the last time I told a lie. It's been over 30 seconds. <laughs> I, I really don't know how long it's been because I don't lie anymore. I'm not saying I won't lie. I'll be honest with you. I mean, uh, the last time I remember lying, I was out duck hunting. And... Uh, 
they asked me a question about shotgun shells. You can only have so many. And I just lied about it. I just said, nope. And they just went on and did their thing. And then I said, Dave, it's not worth being out here like this because you don't relax and even have fun. It's not even worth it. Just do what you're supposed to do and go back and do what you're supposed to do and enjoy. That was the last time I remember. If a cop pulled me over, would I? I don't think I would now. I, I think I'd just tell him the truth, whatever it is, and let it be what it is and not worry about it. But he pardons all our iniquities. Even a stupid smiling face of gold stars on a wall, he pardons it. And I, you know, I don't want to spend the whole time talking about things that I did wrong, but I, there are times that I feel that way. And God, you can't keep forgiving me because I keep messing up. And he says, no, Dave, I love you that much. And I will keep, just keep doing your best, keep confessing, keep coming back, keep coming back. Satan's the one who tells us to not confess and not to run back. Satan's the one who tells us we're not worthy. Satan's the one who brings on condemnation. Remember what Paul said in Romans 8, 1, is therefore no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus? If you're in Christ Jesus, you have no condemnation. Condemnation drives a wedge between you and God, between you and Christ. The Holy Spirit brings conviction. That will make you run back into his arms. Satan's trying to divide you and get you away, and get you off by yourself. And God's saying, no, come back, Dave. Come back and run into my arms, just like GT did this morning. Just run and put your arms up and run back in and I'll hold you again. I can tell you with my kids, I forgave them and forgave them. And we still hug and we still do all those things and we still mess up against each other sometimes. And God loves us more than we love our own children. So he pardons our, all our iniquities, who heals all your diseases. Does that mean that we're going to get completely healed every single time? Well, some people definitely believe that and preach that. I don't see that in God's word. That's not what I see. All healing comes from God. Whether it's the way he created your body, whether he's using a doctor, whether he does it miraculously, all healing comes from God. Of all of it. And God still does the miraculous today, and I've seen the miraculous today, and I've shared the miraculous at times when God does something miraculous, and He still does it. But there are times when He allows us to go through things, even physical things, like you guys know right now I have severe arthritis in both my shoulders. A praise report is the last two weeks when I laid, raised my hands to the Lord, it didn't hurt. Normally it's like I can barely get my arms up to even raise them to the Lord. In the last two weeks, it's like I've just been standing there saying, and you know, I made a decision though. I'm just going to keep raising them and if it hurts, it hurts. I'm just going to keep worshiping and raising and I keep praying God heals. And all my doctors said, I only have one answer and that's you have to have two shoulder replacements. So I'm not real excited on that right now. And I believe that God can heal. And I shared about Leah last week and how the doctor just said, that's impossible, that's impossible, that's impossible. My daughter was pregnant. The doctor told her she's miscarrying and take these pills. And uh, he said the baby's not viable for three reasons. He said its heart's not beating, it's too small, and it's the wrong shape. You were in the act of miscarrying, and Leah was devastated. And then I said, Leah, I'm not accepting that, and I'm not believing that. I'm praying and believing God for a miracle. And uh, after a week, she went back to the doctor's office, explained it to the head person in the office. She said, let me talk to somebody. They said, come back. They did an ultrasound. And she said, well, here's the heartbeat. And it's the right size, and it's the right shape. And wait for the doctor. And all the doctor said is, that's impossible, that's impossible, that's impossible. Not for God, it's not. I believe it. God still heals through the miraculous. And he'll still do it today. Keep praying with all your faith that you have. And until he does it, just keep praying. But it's not just physical. We need emotional healing. Some of us need spiritual healing. I've never seen so much fear so much anxiety, so much depression. It's rampant everywhere, everywhere I go. I have somebody contact me every single day who says they're suicidal, who have tried in times past. Every day I'm in communication with them and just keep saying I, I have a suicidal ideation and I just pray that, keep praying for me. 
I've never seen it so intense and so much. And people were, are facing so much. Financially, it's changed. This country has changed financially. Inflation is real. You're living it. I'm living it. And it's not just at the gas pumps anymore. It's everywhere we go, everything. It's real. And the financial stress and what people are going through. And I'm talking with people about financially. Even people in here who are retired, even thinking about going back to work because they can't make it. I have to go back to work and start having more. And Yeah, it's real what we're going through. God wants to bring healing to that. Fear is not from God. Anxiety is not from God. Depression is not from God. That's all from Satan. And he came to heal our diseases, even mentally and our emotionally. So when, when, you're, when you're living in fear, and you'll have fear. I'm not saying you'll never have it again because you're a Christian. But when it's there, you can say you have no right to be there. You can say, be still and know that I am God. You can say, be um, all things work together for good. All things work together for benefit. And God's with me and he's going through it with me. And he's going to get me through this and I'm going to be stronger when I come out of it. You can say all that. But you'll have fear in your life again. I'll have fear in my life again. I'll probably have some anxiety in my life some more. I, it tries to jump on me. It tries to hit me. I get it. But God's bigger. And this is what God's word says. And forget none of his benefits. Who pardons all your iniquities who heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from the pit. A lot of people are living in the pit of fear and anxiety and worry and depression. and It's just a pit. The thief came to steal, kill, and destroy, but I came that you might have life and life abundantly or more abundantly. That's why Jesus came. Not so that we're in the pit of despair, but we're more than conquerors through him who loved us. He's already, he's already won the war. There's still skirmishes and battles taking place. He's already won it. And he's redeemed our life from the pit. We're not going to hell anymore. We're going to spend eternity in heaven. Mikey and I were talking before church. And he uh, has a, <coughs> is going to maybe try to go up to a, 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 a celebration of life service, I think is what he said, right? Uh, up north. Because I don't know if I can make it or not. This person had a lot of money. And I said, you know what? That doesn't mean anything. I said, Mikey, you and I are blessed. Not everybody has a family like we have. Not everybody has what we have. We're just blessed. And that's so much better than the money. Although money can be nice. As a matter of fact, the Bible says the money is answer for everything, huh, Cynthia? <laughs> she was at Wednesday night Bible study. There's a scripture in Ecclesiastes. I think it's Ecclesiastes 10, 19. It says the money is the answer. For, I said, who can read it? She started reading it. She stopped reading it three or four times because she thought she was reading it wrong. And like I told them on Wednesday night, I'm not even going to tell you what that means. You're going to have to go look it up and figure out what the Bible's saying there because most people don't even know that scripture's in the Bible, let alone where it is. And I, she literally stopped reading like three or four times and reread it to see if she was reading it wrong. But with the Lord and with him inside of us, because we receive his benefits, because he gives them to us, we don't earn them. He's redeemed our life from the pit. Who crowns you with loving kindness and compassion. And then ask yourself, am I seeing the loving kindness? Because he's crowned us with it. We have it. His word tells us it's with us. Are we living it? Are we walking it? Are we giving it away? The people who bug us, are we still giving them loving kindness and compassion? Maybe, maybe not. Sometimes good, sometimes not so well, depending on the hurt and how deep the hurt goes with them and stuff like that. This is the benefit who, who gives us loving kindness and compassion. Who satisfies your years with good things so that your youth is renewed like the eagle. You have choices in life. You have a choice of what you're going to look at. You have a choice of what you're going to listen to. You have a choice 
about what you're going to allow be in your mind and what you're going to put in your mind and what you're going to allow to stay in your mind. That's a choice that you have that you're going to be making over and over and over and over and over. Amen. If you want to be walking in the benefit of who satisfies your years with good things, with good life, so that your youth is renewed like the eagle, you better be putting in God's Word up here. You better be dwelling on God's Word. You better be living Philippians 4.8. Put it up quickly, Mikey. I know it's not in the notes. Quickly, Mikey. <laughs> Fast, Mikey. Finally, brethren, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is of good repute or good report, if there is any excellence in anything worthy of play, praise, dwell on these things. Or really, it's let your mind dwell on these things. You want to be, have your years satisfied? You want to have your youth renewed like the eagle? You want to receive it and dwell on it and fill yourself with it over and over and over. We will all eat some meals today. And tomorrow I won't remember what I ate today, but I'll eat some more meals. And so we, we fill our mind up and then sometimes we have to refill it and re-eat and re-eat and re-eat. Give us this day our daily bread. We need daily bread. Sometimes if you're like me, it needs to be hourly bread. Sometimes I need to break it. When I'm really going through something really intense and really heavy, it has to be almost minutely bread. Just re you know, renewing my mind in the Lord, renewing my mind in the Lord, renewing my mind in the Lord. And as we do, we see his benefits. We live his benefits. We start living abundantly. Not underneath all the crud that the world's trying to pile us on us right now. We're still going to have times when, when we have anxiety and fear. Satan's still going to bring it our way. And even with that, we have a choice with what we do with it. Amen. Remember the problem you're facing, the more you dwell on it, normally it just becomes more overwhelming. So, if you can fix it, fix it. If you can't, take every thought captive to the obedience of Christ. Dwell. Dwell on whatever is honorable and right and pure and lovely and good report and excellence and worthy of praise. Dwell on those things. Dwell on the benefits of God. Dwell on that God causes all things to work together for good for those who love the Lord and call according to his purpose. Dwell on be still and know that I am God. Let that get in your in your mind. Let that get in your heart and in your mind. Start preaching so fast I can't even keep up with myself. Up here, here, let it be there. So we're walking in it, living in it, and not just not just talking about it. See, I know a lot of what a lot of people are going through in this church, and there's a lot of intense stuff in this room. There's a lot of people who are dealing with a lot of anxiety and a lot of fear. It's okay. Just say, Lord, I am. I need help with it right now. And then start filling your mind with God's word. Because as you're doing that, the fear and the anxiety, they're going to start leaving. They're going to start fleeing. They're going to start running away. So, who satisfies your years with good things so that your youth is renewed like the eagle. I don't know about you, but I need to have some renewing in my life of physical energy. I just need this body to start having more energy and more strength. So, those who wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not weary. They shall walk and not faint. And I need to be doing that personally over and over and over. And our physical affects our emotional and our spiritual. And our spiritual and emotional affects physical. It all affects each other. I believe we're tripartite. Do you guys understand that word? There's bipartite, there's tripartite. Bipartite is man is made of two parts, and that is the soul and the body, and tripartite is that he has the spirit, soul, and body. I believe in tripartite man, and all three affect each other and they feed off each other. So when we're when we're lined up in God's word and we're filling our mind and eating healthy at the same time too. You're going to start seeing a lot more victory in your life. You're going to see a lot of the stuff that's really bringing you down and bogging you down and causing anxiety and fear. 
it will still be there, but you won't be living in fear and anxiety anymore. And you'll have the Holy Spirit there helping you because you can be still and know that he is God because he is sovereign, because he is all powerful. And whatever you're going through, he's already got it for you. Amen? Amen. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, I confess there are times when I really get beat up, Father. And I also thank you, Lord, that there's times of victory. And, uh, Lord, I just pray for all of us right now, for people who are going things, going to be facing things, dealing with things, Lord, that today is a day of victory. Today is a day of receiving what you give us, and those are your benefits. And we only got to some of them, but, Lord, we receive those benefits that you declare over us and you have for us, and we thank you for it. I pray, Lord, that we would be a people who walk in victory and, and in strength and your strength and your might, Lord Jesus. We're walking in your strength and your might. And uh, I pray for those who are really going through it right now, Lord, set the captives free, that this word penetrate their, their hearts and their minds, and uh, they would start seeing more abundance in their life, Lord Jesus. And uh, I just thank you for this. And while everybody's praying and everybody has their eyes closed. I don't know, maybe everybody in this room already knows the Lord, but maybe not. And if you're here and you've never accepted the Lord, and you would like to this morning, I'm just inviting you to stand up and walk down up front. I'll come down, we'll pray. You can invite him in. He only comes in by invitation, no other way. You can invite him in, he'll come in. And and receive the loving kindness and the compassion and receive his benefits that he has for you, including everlasting eternal life with him. Anybody would like to do that this morning? Then, Father, I pray that every person in this room knows you and does have a personal relationship with you. And if someone doesn't, Lord, Holy Spirit, continue to penetrate their heart and their mind so they come to know you. And I pray they wouldn't even leave this building today without coming to know you. And if you're watching me on YouTube and you would like to accept the Lord in, I just want you to repeat this prayer after me. Heavenly Father, I want you. I need you. I confess my sin to you. Make me white as snow. Wash away all my sin. I invite you into my life. Come in. Help me to receive your benefits that you have for me. Thank you that you cause all things to work together for good. Help me to be still and know that you are God. Fill me with your Holy Spirit and empower me to be a kingdom changer for you and your kingdom. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Let's stand and worship him.